All right, you guys have waited long enough, so here it is. I got two words for you. Fighting Climax. Sweet baby Jesus, could it be Dengeki Bunko Fighting Climax? An anime crossover fighter that is both on its way to the West and worth playing? Outrageous. Get hyped, kids. A look at the roster here. We got fighters from Sword Art Online, Dudadadada, Mahoka Koko no Ritose. Wait, 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 wait a minute, what? My little sister can't be this cute? A non-incest, incest fantasy in a fighting game? And she's blonde! Story modes in fighting games really have a lot in common with cable pornography. While a narrative frame is expected to be present, there is a firm understanding you did not come for the tantalizing interpersonal character dialogue. That's not to say that Biden Climax is completely devoid of a story, or at least some mashed together kanji connected by a variety of uh, particles and verbs masquerading as one. There's actually two story modes to choose from here. The first being a super standard, incredibly average, unremarkable in any way story campaign. If you went to high school fighting Climax's story mode, it would have been that 5'10 guy with brown hair and green eyes who pulled mostly bees, had a respectable number of friends, and whose sexuality was never called into question in the showers after gym class. The story itself is a lot like high school as well, wherein uh, the cool kids, deities in this case, are having a little bit of a spat. Just like in real high school, their trash talk and sweet shade throwing skills are A1 but neither of them was willing to actually throw down in fear of revealing the fact that they hit like a limp-wristed goldfish. So they call their, uh, I don't know, just, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I want to make sure I'm pronouncing this right, their boys to back them up and do their dirty work. Sidebar, it's probably one of those small alternative high schools because they're, uh, pulling from the same roster here. The second offering is the Dream Duel mode. This boasts interesting encounters between your favorite fighters as they interact with each other in short scenes and manners true to their character. Now that sounds pretty awesome on paper, but sadly the entire thing is paper thin. <laughs> now, for example, the duel between Kirito and Shana, Shana goes off on how she's craving melon bread, but there doesn't appear to be any in the world they've found themselves in. Kirito, being the nice guy that he is, offers to make her something just like it, and all that they would need to do is gather the necessary ingredients. Excitedly, she asks what they need to collect. Oh, let's see here. We're gonna need some cave spider eggs and uh, scales of fully grown big mustard uh, and oh, can't forget the body fluids of the bog worm. Yeah, should give it that proper melon smell. Uh, yeah. Then Shiana understandably freaks out at the thought of eating melon bread made from giant bug entrails and starts to throw down. And that's it. That charming conversation is all you get. No contextual infight dialogue, no special battle conditions, not even any matchup specific victory dialogue to put a little bow on the initial conversation. I guess it's kind of interesting the first time, but there's just not a lot of meat to it. Each character only has six duels with predetermined opponents that can be fought in any order. I believe everyone does have a duel with everyone, but the characters you can play in the duel are preset. For example, if you want to take Asuna for a roll in the hay using, say, uh, I don't know, Yuki? I'm afraid the number of shits the game gives is roughly equal to the number of birthday presents you receive from your dad after he ran out for cigarettes 15 years ago and never came back. Which is to say zero. However, if you want to use Asuna to stir up Yuki's insides by way of multiple violent abdominal incisions, Fighting Climax will by all means be your huckleberry. Okay guys, here it is. This is a fighting game. It is not redefine the genre with its gameplay mechanics, and mastering them won't earn you your father's love. This leaves me in a compromising position in that, despite my confidence in your capacity to surmise exactly how this beast plays, I still feel compelled to outline the mechanics for you, being as one, this won't be available in English till sometime in October. And two, review is unmistakably part of the video's title. Well, wanna know what? Ah, oh, yeah, we can work with this. Let's, let's play a little game. From here on out, each time I list a gameplay mechanic, trope, or anything painfully obvious that should go without saying, I'm gonna flash this icon, and we take a drink. So I don't know what you guys are having, but uh, I got a special bottle of sake here. I've been holding on for a time just like this. Oh, this is gonna be a good video. Baby, remember, kids watch your show as well. You shouldn't be drinking alcohol in your video. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right, sweetheart. I 
Probably better just to have some grape juice or something. Some adult grape juice. Okay, ready, set, go. Fighting Climax is one of your standard best of three fighters. The combat on the surface is quite simple that anyone can pick it up and have a good time without putting obscene amounts of time into mastering lengthy combos. That being said, mastering the game's subtleties will certainly take some time. Each character has three basic attacks, light, mid, and heavy. With the fourth button, X, summoning your support character. The shoulder buttons act as shortcuts for simultaneous button presses. L being light and mid, which triggers your character's trump card ability. We'll get to that in a moment. And R being all three primary attacks, which puts your character into burst mode. This as well. Special attacks are fired off with either quarter circle forward or back. And like everything else I've mentioned so far, they have aerial variants as well. Mid and heavy attacks are largely one-off strikes that can fit into larger combos. However, you can mash on the light attack button to plop out a nice little auto combo. In addition, you can extend this combo by burning meter. Also, there's a meter. It stacks up to five. You have played fighting games before, haven't you? And finally, half circle forward and back activates one of each fighter's two ultimate attacks. In this game, they're called, uh, climaxes. Now, not that I would know, but, uh, filling a meter with the express purpose to climax sounds suspiciously like the mechanics of a hentai game, if you're asking me. <laughs> Right, so trunk cards. These are special attacks that you can fire off by spending one of your little Dengeki logos seen right above your meter. Each player starts the match with two and they do not regen after being used. However, the loser of each round does get one back at the start of the next round to keep things balanced if one player is straight up dominating the other. These attacks vary from character to character. Some launching your enemy into the air, others just being powered up super stylish strikes. In the case of Kirito, not an attack at all, but a buff where he pulls out his second blade and sees a hearty damage boost for a set time. It's so sweet how everyone just sits there and waits for him to navigate his menus as he prepares to murder them. Ah, good sportsmen, a lot of them. Then we have Silvaria's trump card, which happens to be grounded in reality, being as a Gatling gun is a trump card in a real fight as well. Whew, that damage though. I would equate burst mode to a tender lover. It's always there to help you out when things are looking rough. And it plays a key role in helping you climax when you need it most. These jokes, uh, they write themselves, really. Okay, just so I've spelled it out. Activating burst mode acts as a cancel, it counters and or breaks an opponent's combo, sending them flying, and provides you with a boost in meter as well. Important to note, both burst mode and ally summon have their own independent cooldowns. There are a handful of game modes to choose from here other than the basic story modes, including your standard versus, training, time attack, and survival modes. But the longevity of a fighting game of this nature lives and dies on its online matchmaking. I spent some time with the online mode both in Japan and America, and here are my findings. In Japan, the matches were smooth with strong connections, I experienced lag only a small handful of times, and there was also a sizable community, meaning that finding a match was mega quick. In America, the opposite of everything I just said. <coughs> Fighting Climax is not the most complex fighter you're ever going to get your hands on, but I really think that accessibility works out in its favor. Not content with delivering only rock-solid gameplay, Fights are executed with an exciting visual flair, combos chained together seamlessly, and the power behind each strike is visually conveyed to the player in a phenomenal, over-the-top, anime-esque fashion. The delivery of the power fantasy is on point here. The absurdity of most of the special attacks, the intense breakneck pace of combat, and the predominantly female cast with their questionably short skirts makes you feel like you're playing a Japanese middle schooler's benadryl fueled fever dream. Speaking of the main cast, it's small, just 12 characters to start with only another two becoming unlockable later. Oh, wait a minute, did I say that like it was a bad thing? Because it is not. A tight cast allows each fighter to have their own unique feel, moveset, and personality within the game. Speaking of things enjoyed in small quantities... <sighs> As I said before, there's a strong female presence here. 
Out of the original 12 fighters, all but three are girls. And of the remaining two unlockable fighters, only one is male. 10 to 4 in favor of females? Now that is a ratio I can get behind. But it's kind of funny to take a step back and look at how similarly all these girls are dressed. I mean, there are some exceptions, but you will find yourself faced with plenty of short skirts, knee-high socks, and... <laughs> Japanese words with Caleb. Zetairiyuk is a four kanji compound word. Now, the first kanji, zetai, conveys absoluteness, and the second kanji, ryoik, is area, space, or domain. Now, what exactly does zetairiyuk mean? Well, <laughs> I am glad you asked. Zetairiyuk is the visible part of a woman's thigh between the end of her skirt and the beginning of her stockings. And if you're wondering why this particular bit of exposed skin garnered such a grand title as the absolute space, well, uh, <laughs> The art direction for Fighting Climax is the gold standard for games based on manga and anime. The in-game models, oh, well wait, are they, are they still called models when they're only 2D? Sprites? No, we're gonna go with models. Anyway, they look ripped straight from their respective source materials. Not only are they colorful and crisp, but they're each animated with a wonderful sense of motion and fluidity. As one would expect, there's a lot of character art here. All playable characters have a standard portrait that appears in menus and at the beginning of fights, all of which are pre-existing, as well as a victory portrait created specifically for the game. All of these are lovely works of art. However, the models used in story conversations look just a little janky to me. I'm not sure how to describe them. It's like they rendered a 3D model in 2D, so it looks kinda static, but also stretches and shifts in unnatural looking ways. It's kind of like when you had that fever of 104 when you were 6 and hallucinated your Crash Bandicoot poster moving around and telling you crazy things like, uh -huh, press X to jump! Ronald Reagan was the last great president! If you get me sick, I'll fucking smother you while you're sleeping! I'm going out for some cigarettes! Anyway, it doesn't mesh well with the clean look of the rest of the game, but it does nothing to detract from it either. The fighting stages are all rendered in 3D and modeled after famous Sega games. You have everything from Sonic to Knights, even Valkyria Chronicles. Virtual Fighter 5 needs to hold up here for a sec though. I mean, all I see here is a shrine courtyard covered in cherry blossoms. You don't get to just claim that. That's just been part of Japanese culture way longer than you've been around. That is called Columbusing, and it is not cool. You want to end up like Christopher Columbus, huh? You want to die of a reactive arthritis-induced heart attack in the middle of buttfuck Spain? Didn't think so. So the stages are pretty and everything, so uh, that's plus. The sound design hits all the correct marks, thanks to subtle audio details like the click of your heels on the ground after a lengthy air combo, or the sound of shattering glass as you counter an enemy attack, the combat has made it just that much more satisfying. The music throughout Fighting Climax is laden with upbeat techno and often blended with jazzy undertones and trumpet stabs. While it does its job setting the atmosphere, I don't believe any of it will be finding its way onto your workout playlist. All dialogue is voice acted, and by each character's original voice actors no less. I don't think that's gonna matter to those of you who don't speak Japanese, but everyone sounds as cocky, cute, or annoying as they were intended to. You know, whether it's just their, uh, nasally dismissive voice, or their spammable, frustrating movesets, or them macking on their own brother in a church and then giving back the goddamn butter ring! Japanese words with Caleb. It's slang, and usually written using kana alone. The meaning is. Regardless of whether or not you're a fan of the Dengeki Bunko novels or any of the characters on offer here, you are sure to find a slick, entertaining fighter. Although it is far from perfect, Fighting Climax is a great way to kill time in minute and a half increments. And uh, I gotta say, I give this game a rating of this game is gold. And another review done. 
I want to take the time to thank you guys because if it hadn't been for all of you, I never would have even thought to play this game. It's from you guys messaging me and, uh, and comments and all the stuff that I even knew to play Fighting Climax. So uh, please, if you would bark in the comments or send me a uh, tweet at me, send me Facebook messages, whatever you want, the next game you want me to... Well, I guess you guys don't need to bother commenting anymore. Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. Holy crap, you made it to this part of the video. You must really be enjoying this content. If that's the case, may I recommend you subscribe for updates on when uh, new videos are coming out. Additionally, if you wanna follow me on Facebook and Twitter, feel free to do that as well. And if I may be so bold, I'd like to recommend a few videos for you. I just put up, just being a very loose word on this channel, a video of the uh, top 10 Japanese games that need to be localized this summer. So if you want to check that out, this game was on the list, I'm not going to tell you where. And uh, there's also a variety of other reviews I've done, and I will include a link to the playlist here. Feel free to enjoy those at your leisure. And yeah, that's everything. Thanks for watching, and in the meantime, I guess we're done here.